All right, guys, so um, how you doing? My name is David. Um, pretty experienced fantasy player. And I'm going to be making a series of videos that basically talk about fantasy sports. Uh, right now being is where January, about to move into February pretty soon. We're going to be focusing on baseball to start um, as the spring and summer approach and the baseball drafts are done and you're getting more into like the day-to-day -day, um, maintaining your rosters and moves and stuff like that. Uh, we'll start talking a little bit more about football, especially around the time of the NFL draft, uh, free agency as the moves get made and stuff like that there. So basically what I want this to be is kind of like a user-friendly, anybody who plays fantasy, whether you are a first-time player or a pretty experienced player like I am. I've been playing fantasy sports for over 20 years. Um, anyone can come and watch these videos and get the tips and um, scouting techniques and stuff that I use um, to help them either start off in fantasy or help improve their game. So what I want to do is, especially for people if you've never played fantasy before, if you have, you can maybe skip ahead a little bit, kind of scroll through um, to where I'm going to start talking about basic strategies and stuff like that, um, is talk about the types of leagues that there are. And there's basically um, three main types of fantasy leagues. Uh, the first one is redraft. And what that is, is you draft your team, you play the season, and then your team is gone. Uh, the next season, you come back and you draft a completely new team. So if you draft a guy and he bombs out, don't worry about it because you won't have him next year. Then you have keeper leagues. Keeper leagues are a little different because you have to, uh, based on your league rules, I've seen as little as one keeper. And I've seen as many as like 10, 15 keepers. So your league rules may vary just depending on how competitive, how serious, um, the level of um, expertise of the people in your leagues. Um, and there's basic strategies and there's different strategies depending on how many keepers. And we'll get into that in future videos where I kind of break down each type of league a little bit more in depth. Um, and then you have Dynasty. Dynasty is personally my favorite format to play. Uh, Dynasty is where you get your group of owners together. You drift your team, and that's your team forever. You are now basically like the owner or the GM of a team. You handle everything from the time they are drafted by you until either the time you either trade them, release them, or they retire. That player is yours. So there is definitely a lot of strategy that goes in there, a lot of in-depth strategy, a lot of things that you're going to want to look at when you want to get into that. I don't recommend personally, unless you are a really hardcore fan of the sport that you're going to be participating in, starting off with Dynasty Leagues. They're very involved. They require a level of commitment uh, to that league that is unlike... Um, a redraft or a keeper league. I recommend that if you're watching a video like this and you've never played fantasy before, do a redraft league. Um, they're very simple. They're very easy to get into. You can go on any of the sites that have fantasy, whether it's ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, fan tracks. Um, there's countless amounts of sites for whatever sport you want to play, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, hockey. They have NASCAR leagues. I've seen fantasy golf. I've seen just countless amounts. If, if there's a sport, there's probably a fantasy league for it somewhere. Um, I would personally recommend starting with a redraft league. Um, you really only have to know the basic um, main players from each team. You don't have to get too far. Most of the time in a redraft league, you're not even you're you're not even drafting like backups. You know, you don't have to know more than like maybe the top five to ten players on each team. Because typically in a in a regular fantasy league, you're gonna have anywhere from ten to twelve players 
Um, I play in leagues where the dynasty leagues I play in, I play in a couple where there's 16 players. Those rosters get really deep, especially um, when you talk about the roster sizes we have. And like I said, when I get into a little bit more of defining what each league is, uh, we'll get into that. It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you have a good handle for pretty much, like I said, the top five to 10 players on each team. You want to know the top prospects, the top prospects. Okay. You can go to MLB.com, um, look at their prospect lists. And basically, as long as you know, like the top hundred prospects, or you can even go to like, you can break it down by each team and it'll show you like the top 30 prospects for like the Seattle Mariners, for the Los Angeles Angels, for the Oakland A's, for whatever. I'm a, I'm a Mets fan. So, you know, you can just go and look at maybe the top, maybe the top one or two pitchers and a couple of their position players, because unlike football, which has a 53 man roster, you know, baseball only has a 25, 24 man roster. They, they can occasionally add a player here or there. They have a 40 man roster, which is you have your 24 man roster, 25 man roster at the major league level. And then they have a group of players that can be drawn from without, um, clearing space on a roster. They, you know, if someone gets injured, you can add someone to the 40 man roster, um, if someone gets traded, like if you have a two for one trade now, it opens up a spot. If someone retires, if someone, you know, stuff like that. So they can add people to the 40 man roster, but typically that is where your backups are going to come from. At least the ones that are fantasy relevant, because if it's just like your basic utility infielder or a fourth or fifth outfielder, if they were truly fantasy relevant, they'd be starting. So your fantasy relevant backups are going to be your top players in either double A AA or triple A. That's where your main prospects are. So you can go again on MLB.com um, and you can look at every team's 40 man roster. And let's say, I mean, like I said, I'm a Mets fan. So let's just use the Mets for an example. Um, let's say last year we had uh, Dominic Smith. We had quite a, we had quite a few players playing first base. Okay. If you knew anything about the Mets last year, you know that we have a kid in the minors named Peter Alonzo. And last year through the minor league season and the Arizona fall league season, he had 40 home runs and he's like going to be one. Of, he's supposed to be, I'm a Mets fan. So supposed to be, uh, one of the next big things. And he's probably going to be, hopefully, either a starting first baseman coming out of the out of spring training this year, or he's going to get called up very quickly. So, if you knew about him last year, you might have taken a chance to draft him last year, thinking maybe he'd get a call up if enough injuries happened or something like that. So, you don't have to get too crazy with prospects. Where you're going to get crazy with prospects is when you start playing more keeper leagues, and absolutely in dynasty leagues. Um, so those are the three main types of leagues. You have redraft, you have keeper, you have dynasty. Now you have to think about the ways you can draft your team. So you have a traditional draft and traditional drafts in fantasy are run on a snake draft. And this is maybe a little different for people who aren't familiar with fantasy uh, sports because when you hear of a draft, it's normally the entry level draft for baseball, the NFL draft, stuff like that. It goes from 1 to 30, 1 to 32, depending on how many teams in that sport. And then what happens is after the round, they go back to the top. And that's great because they do it based on their order of finish. So the weaker teams, they want them to have the first pick every round because they need to have the best opportunity to improve their team. In fantasy, we do what's called a snake draft. So let's say there's 12 teams in your league. So the first round, you'll obviously draft from 1 to 12. But then in the second round, it'll go from 12 to 1 and then so on and so forth going through. And if you just join a league, a random league, just to get experience with it, say on ESPN or Yahoo or something like that, typically the service will um, automatically randomize the draft order uh, right before the draft. So you'll log into the site, it'll say your draft room is ready, you'll pull up the draft software, it'll load up for you and you'll see where your draft position is. Um, and again, depending on where your draft position is, that can influence your strategy on how to uh, formulate your team. 
and that is probably going to be the next video I do, and that's going to be on draft strategy, because depending on what type of league you're playing in, uh, the scoring systems that you're playing in, I'm going to get into scoring in a little bit in this video, and um, your draft position is definitely going to influence uh, where you're going to target, what you're going to do with your draft, because if... Um, you want to, if you're really high in the draft and you know you're drafting first and it's a snake draft, you basically have to go all the way to 12 and then all the way back up before you get another pick. Now, in the second and third round, you're going to get two picks in a row because of the way it works, right? So one to 12, then 12 to one, and then one to 12 again. So if you're one or 12, you're always going to be picking back to back, except for the first pick and the last pick of the draft. Okay, if that makes sense. So you're going to be able to fill a need, but let's say, and the best, I mean, I know I'm doing this about baseball, but the best way to describe it is using football as a reference, um, the running back position in football, you have your elite running backs. And then after like the top, maybe f four to six running backs, you know, you got your Todd Gurley's. This year, you got Saquon Barkley. You got uh, Ezekiel Elliott. You got Le'Veon Bell. You know, hopefully he plays next year. Um, you got, you know, you got your group, your core group of four to six that are like the elite running backs. After that, there's a drop off. So, if you have the first couple of picks in a football draft, you're going running back. You have to pick a running back first because by the time it gets all the way back to you. You figure if every single person after you takes a running back, when it gets back to you, that's 21 picks. So now you figure if everyone takes the lead back off of a team, you're going to get the 22nd best running back, which you're looking at the Dolphins running back. So Kenyon Drake, you know, you don't want to start your team with Kenyon Drake as your running back. So same thing in baseball. There are certain positions that are weaker than other positions or not weaker per se, but they have less depth. Catcher is a really, is a really good, um, is a really good example of that. Okay. But you also want to take into consideration the fact that the elite players overall. So if you have the number one pick, you're taking Mike Trout. I mean, let's be honest, or you're taking Mookie Betts or you're going to take, I mean, after this year, if he continues on this road, Christian Yelich has to be a consideration. Uh, those are probably three of the top players in fantasy. J.D. Martinez has got to get a little consideration. He's not as balanced as the other three people. But again, let's focus more on the types of drafts and stuff like that. We can worry about players. I'm going to do uh, videos later on where I basically, where I'm going to break down every team in Major League Baseball. And I'm going to tell you the players you should be targeting in uh, redraft leagues, uh, keeper leagues, and dynasty leagues. Um, so that's that's a draft league. That's a snake draft league. Then you have auction. Now, much like I said with dynasty, I don't personally recommend that if you're a first-time fantasy baseball player that you begin with an auction league. Auction leagues are basically everyone gets a monetary amount, um, generally about like two hundred and eighty dollars. And then what happens is someone will nominate a player. So let's say Mike Trout, okay, best player in baseball, um, probably one of the best players you or I have ever seen. Uh, so someone nominates Mike Trout. Now everybody in the league can bid on Mike Trout. But remember, you have $280 to fill your entire roster. Most leagues, you have a catcher, first baseman, second baseman, third baseman, shortstop, anywhere from three to five outfielders, a utility player, possibly a corner infielder, which can be first or third, a middle infielder, which can be short or second, and anywhere from eight to ten pitchers, and then you have a certain amount of bench spots. So you're looking at drafting 22, 23 regular players, and then maybe 8 to 10 bench, depending on your league settings. I've seen benches as small as 6, as many as 10 or 12. And again, you only have $280 to do this. 
So how much money do you want to commit to Mike Trout? See what I'm saying? So if you're a first-time fantasy player, I would not do an auction league. I would get my feet wet in redraft leagues, learn the scoring, learn the formatting, learn all this kind of stuff. And then once you're experienced and you want to branch out, see what it's about. Now, the good thing about all these sites, too, if you're a first-time player, is they have something that's called a mock draft. You can actually go in and you can practice. You can sign up on ESPN, Yahoo, again, all these different sites. And you look for, like, mock drafts. And you can go in and actually do a draft. And people, I do mock drafts a lot because I might have a different strategy that I want to try. I might want to target someone at the top of the draft that other people may not target. And I want to see, like, what kind of team I can formulate around that player. So we'll use mock drafts quite a bit to, you know, even experienced players will use mock drafts quite a bit to experiment either with new strategies or we, you know, we might know of a player who's supposed to come out and explode and we might want to get him before anyone else. So let's see what we can do with drafting this guy early and seeing what we can formulate around him. So use that to your advantage. And if you want to branch off into an auction draft, they have those too. So you can kind of play around with it and be like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, maybe spending $80 on Mike Trout's not a good idea. You know, maybe I should only spend like 45 or 50 bucks on him because now it saves me money for other positions. So those are the types of leagues you, again, just to recap real quick for the first part of this video, you have the um, redraft, you have keeper, you have dynasty. The two main kinds of drafting styles are either snake draft or auction. Now we have scoring, and there are three main types of scoring systems that can be used. The first one, and the classic one, is rotisserie scoring. And what that basically is, it's really simple to understand. You have categories. So for offensive category, normally it's what we call 5x5, five five, and that's five offensive categories and five, D, uh, five pitching categories. So for offensive categories, normally it'll be home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, either average or on-base percentage. And then the fourth one varies a lot. I've seen leagues that have hits. I've seen total bases. I've seen runs scored. I've seen all kinds of different things. So, But the four main ones are generally home runs, stolen bases, um... Wow, what did I say? Home runs, stolen bases, RBIs, and either average or on-base percentage. Um, I like on-base percentage personally, but I play in a couple leagues that use average. Um, and then, like I said, the fifth one can vary. For pitching, it's normally wins, strikeouts, ERA, whip, which for those of you who may not know, whip is uh, walks plus hits, per inning pitch, W-H-I-P, whip, walks plus hits per inning pitched. So basically, if you have a pitcher who pitched in a complete inning, they didn't give up any walks, but they had one hit, they have a whip of one, okay? Because they're considered to give up one walk per and hit per inning. If they give up three hits and no walks, mm. then their whip is three, okay? Anything more, it will go up accordingly. So, um, the last one is typically saves. It's a relief pitcher category. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit because strategy definitely comes into play when it comes to saves. Uh, but again, that's for another video with draft strategy and stuff like that. We'll get into that in another video. Uh, so that's rotisserie scoring. Uh, those are the categories rather. I'm sorry. I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, with the way you're ranked is this. So let's say you have 10 players. So if you're leading the league in total home runs, so all your stats for all your players are added up on a daily basis. So it can fluctuate. These points can fluctuate day by day, hour by hour, game by game. You literally can watch during the day your scoring system and every five minutes things will be adjusting because as stats come in from all over the league everything will change so it's really cool to watch 
Um, and what will happen is, again, 10 teams in the league. So whoever's leading the league in home runs, let's say your team has 30 home runs at a certain point in the season and you have the most home runs more than anyone else in the league, you'll get 10 points for that category. All the way down to whoever's last in that category will receive one point. So now you take all the categories. If you're leading in all 10 categories, you'll have 100 points. You'll be leading the league with 100 points. But you could be first in four categories, third in a couple of categories, last in a couple of categories. So, and then what happens is, again, it will fluctuate tremendously. You know, you might have a couple of days where you have guys who have a couple of days off or you have a couple of rainouts or something like that in baseball. So your guys won't play and guys are playing. So their stats, but then they'll have a couple of days and your guys will be playing. So then, so it really fluctuates. And in this kind of league, it goes from the first day of the season to the last day of the season. There's no playoffs. There's nothing like that. Rotisserie is just straight up seasonal play. Um, so a lot of people like it because they feel it's a true test of who can put the best team together. Because in the playoffs, when you have playoffs, just like in regular sports, the best the best overall team doesn't always win in the playoffs, especially if you're talking about like, like in football, in a one-game match. You know, like last week, the Bears lost to, you know, Philly because the kicker hit the crossbar. If they'd play again this week, the Bears might win that game. So... You know, is that the fairest test of who is the best team? Not always. You have teams, you know, think about it, a couple of times the Giants won the Super Bowl and they only won nine games in the regular season, but they got the wild card and won every game in the playoffs. They got hot at the right time. So most people feel their rotisserie is the best way to judge who has the best team because it's stats accumulated over a course of an entire season. So... It's a, it's a really fun way to play. I think, again, if you're getting started in uh, fantasy, it's a good way to play because you can get used to the moves. Um, in baseball leagues, you have different kinds of formats as far as uh, lineups and stuff like that. Some, you set your lineup for an entire week, and you can't change your lineup during the week. So if someone gets injured, someone gets injured. You can't change them. Then you have daily leagues where you can change your lineup every day. Um, again, different strategies. We'll get into, again, when I do draft strategies and stuff like that, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then you have points. Points is probably the easiest thing. If you are new and you like, hey, I kind of like the idea of rotisserie, uh, but I want to experience just a season or two of fantasy before I delve into that. Cause it seems, you know, it's the classic way it's, I would say it's probably the way most leagues run is on rotisserie scoring. So, um, I want to do it, but I'm not quite sure yet. Points is the way to go. Points is very simple. Every stat is assigned a point value. So, you know, let's say a home run is four points and a triple is three points and a double is two points and a single is one point. You get extra points for RBIs, for runs scored, for stolen bases. Everything has a certain point value associated with it. For pitching, they'll get a certain amount of points for a win, for a strikeout. You'll get negative points for a walk sometimes. You'll get negative points for a hit allowed, for a run that's given up and stuff like that. So... You know, you have certain things, you know, for the hitting side, I've seen leagues where you get negative points for a strikeout, which nowadays in baseball is huge because strikeouts are so prevalent now. So if you're playing in a league that gives negative points for strikeouts, your draft strategy is completely different because now, I mean, guys who strike out 150, 200 times a year, they're all stars where 20, 30 years ago, if they struck out that many times, they'd be in the minors because they would have to work on their hitting. So, but, you know, in the money ball era where it's more about on-base percentage and, you know, a walk is as good as a hit and all this kind of stuff, the, the way the game is played is a lot different, and that's impacted fantasy sports too. The way fantasy sports is played because of that is completely different than when I first started. When I first started, you didn't want to draft anyone who had under a 270 average. Now it's like, oh, well, you know, he bats 240, but he hits 30 home runs a year. So, you know, the good outweighs the bad. So, again, we'll get a lot more into that when we talk about draft strategy. So, points, again, like I said, you have a certain point value for every stat. And basically, your team plays throughout the week and 
whoever accumulates the most points wins. And it's head to head. Um, like you'll play one team one week, you'll play another team. And that kind of league typically will run is generally 26 weeks in the Major League Baseball season. Um, that league will run generally 22 or 23 weeks for the regular season. And then you'll have a two or three week playoff, depending on the size of your league. So many teams will qualify for the playoffs. They'll play off against each other. And then whoever wins is the champion of the league. Then you have category scoring. Now, category scoring, this is kind of like Dynasty. It's advanced. It goes hand-in-hand hand with Dynasty. Most of the Dynasty leagues that I've seen are category scoring. And what that means, it's kind of like rotisserie, where you have the cumulative numbers for the categories, except instead of total for the season, it's week by week. It's head-to-head. -head. So you're going to play another team, and each category is a win. So, again, in that 5x5 five five scoring, 5 hitting categories, 5 pitching categories, you have 10 points available. So, you can either go 7-3, and 8-2, and two. you can go 7-2-1 and one because you might tie in a category, say both of your teams hit 30 home runs for the week, you know, or something like that. Not a lot of teams hit 30 home runs for a week, but, you know, it's just a number that I threw out there. Um, so, and then what happens is, so let's say the first week I'm playing against somebody and I go 7-2-1. and one. That's my record. I'm 7-2-1. and one. So then, accumulatively, over the whole season, as I'm playing all these teams, you'll have your record. And then the top teams with the record, it usually goes by winning percentage. Because once you start throwing ties in there, the winning percentages and stuff. So it doesn't go straight on wins. Because I could have a certain amount. I could have more wins than someone, but their winning percentage could be better. Because they had a certain amount of ties in the category. So whoever has the best winning percentages will advance to the playoffs. They'll play off against each other. And then the winner is the whoever wins the playoffs. You can do this for free. You can do this for money. Um, I happen to play in quite a few different money leagues. Um, the I play in three dynasty baseball leagues where it is... Um, one of them is $60 a year, one of them is $65 a year, one of them is $35 a year. And then I play in a Dynasty League that is points-based, and we pay $25 in that. Um, and they pay out pretty good. I mean, the one league I play in pays out $400, $350 for first place. If you come in third or fourth place, you make at least your money back for the year. If not, maybe, maybe almost double your money for the year. Um, so, you know, there's various levels. I personally find that if there's no money involved, um, or at least something involved, like a lot of leagues now are getting into the whole, um, buying some kind of championship belt, um, and the winner gets the belt for the year. Some leagues do a punishment. If you come in dead last, you got to do something silly. Um, I've seen where people have to stand out on a corner with no shirt on and a pair of shorts and like 30 degree weather with a sign that says, I suck at fantasy baseball. Um, or they have to get a tattoo or I've seen people have to go to like an open mic night at a comedy night and the rest of the league writes their jokes for them and they're horrible jokes. So they have to go up on stage and bomb. Uh, that's really funny. I really like that one. I might have to try and do something like that in one of my leagues personally, cause I think that's hilarious. Um, you don't have, I mean, me personally, I find it a lot of fun when you know all the people that you're playing fantasy sports with. I do happen to play in quite a few leagues where I don't know personally that I haven't I haven't met everybody. Some of the leagues, but there tends to be a nice camaraderie uh, that forms within the league. Um, a lot of times, uh, some of the leagues I play in, we have uh, Facebook pages where you can either talk to the guys, you can trash talk each other. Um, we have chats where, like, especially, like, you know, you can talk about the games as they're being played. Um, then you can set off private chats where you can, like, discuss trades with people and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I find it more fun the more people you know in the league, especially if you're friends with the people in the league. So, if you've never played in one, ask around. Fantasy sports is so um, prevalent. It's so popular nowadays that I guarantee that even if you don't play fantasy sports, you know somebody who does. 
or you know somebody who knows somebody who does. So if you're on Facebook or if you're on Twitter, make a post and be like, hey, I'm looking to get into some fantasy leagues. I want to try it out. I've heard about it. You know, does anybody know someone who runs a league? Invariably, someone's going to know somebody who runs a league and has an opening. If all else fails, like I said, just go on any of the sites. They'll they'll definitely um, have something available for you where you can at least try it out. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap up this first video. Um, like I said, you have the main types of leagues. You have the redraft. You have the keeper. You have the dynasty. You have the draft styles where you have the rotis. I'm um, sorry. You have the draft styles, which is auction or snake. And then you have the scoring styles where it's either going to be rotisserie points or head to head by categories where every category is a win. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, videos probably two or three times a week if I can. Uh, right now I'm sitting outside my daughter's school waiting for her to come. Uh, so I can pick her up to uh, go home for the day. So I generally get here about an, 45 minutes to an hour before she gets let out because there's a lot of car riders at this school. Um, and I like to be one of the first ones to pick her up. So I'm going to probably be doing most of the videos. You'll see me in the car like this where I'm just hanging out waiting for her to come. I'll probably do some from the house as well. Um, please like the video. Uh, subscribe so that way when I do post more videos you'll get notifications about it I'm going to be setting up an email uh, for this page because I'm going to be doing uh, Q&A's where um, you can if you have a decision that you have to make is if you're in a keeper or a dynasty league um, you know if you have questions about who, who you should be drafting, uh, you have a question about one player versus another player, I can help you out answer those questions. If you have any trade questions where, hey, you know, someone's offering me player A and B and they want players, these guys from my team, I can kind of maybe give you a little bit of advice about who what I would do in that kind of situation for those players. Uh, so definitely uh, keep an eye out for that because um, I'll definitely be starting to do that. Hopefully once I get through all of the uh, video, the initial videos I want to make. I wanted to do this one about the types of fantasy. Uh, next, I'm going to talk, the next video I do will probably be about draft strategies and what you should be targeting, when you should be targeting it, um, the, the categories that you want to look for early. Um, and then I'm going to start getting into the teams. Um, I'm going to break down a lot of the teams. Uh, the free agent season really hasn't kicked in high gear yet as I'm making this video right now. It's January 9th. Um, a lot of the big free agents have not signed yet. Uh, Bryce Harper's still out there. Manny Machado. Uh, Dallas Keuchel's still out there. Um, so there's quite a few names that still have to sign with teams. Um, I'll probably run through a lot of those names because a lot of those names... If they're out there, when I go through the teams, I mean, they're going to be guys that you want. Obviously, you're going to want a Bryce Harper. You're going to want a Manny Machado. Dallas Keuchel, you're going to want him, but not as early as some other pitching names. So he's not as prevalent um, anymore. I mean, you know, there's always a chance that he, you know, turns it around. He had a really, he had kind of a so-so year last year. Some of his peripheral stats were pretty good, but he had an off year for his standards. Um, so as those names begin to sign, we can uh, jump into where they signed. I can always say, you know, I'm doing the, you know, Chicago White Sox today, but oh my God, Bryce Harper signed with the LA Dodgers. So here's how that's going to affect everything. I can go over that in a couple of minutes at the beginning of the video. Um, or I can drop a little five minute video just saying, you know, hey, update on the Dodgers or wherever he signs. So, but yeah, um, if you have any thoughts, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment until I get the email set up. Um, I will definitely be checking those out. I'll um, answer those as quick as I can. Um, I do uh, work as a server um, in two different restaurants. So if I'm scheduled all the days that I can be scheduled, I work up to six days a week. So um, that can influence how often I do these videos because I do like to have my family time as well. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, and then, like I said, as, uh, as baseball kind of calms down after the beginning of the season, I'll start diving into football. 
I don't play uh, fantasy basketball. Um, I don't really watch enough of basketball to know enough about the players. Um, I used to be a basketball fan, but with, you know, a bigger basketball fan, I watch it occasionally. But the way the game is played now, um, I'm not that big of a fan. Um, I don't like seeing 25 threes a game and, you know, nothing but highlight dunks. Um, I miss the 18-foot jump shot, 15, 18-foot jump shot. Um, as you can tell, I'm a huge hockey fan. Um, New York Rangers is my team, obviously. Um, but I really don't play fantasy hockey all that much, only because nobody else does. Uh, it's very hard to find... Um, a good fantasy hockey league where people want to put some money in it and be competitive and stay with it. Um, so I don't really play fantasy hockey. So I probably won't talk too much about that. If you happen to have a question about it, please feel free to ask. Um, I can do a little bit of research into it um, and I can give you my best advice um, on it, if you have questions about players, because I'm a big hockey fan in general, I, you know, hockey is actually probably, probably my favorite sport to watch, so, um, I do know quite a bit about the game and about the players and stuff, I just don't, I don't play a lot of it, only because, again, it's not really that prevalent, um, so, the two main sports that are out there is basketball, and, I'm sorry, baseball and football, that's where I spend a lot of my time. Um, as far as daily fantasy goes, um, I do play some daily fantasy sports. Um, it's a much different animal than season long. You have to know a lot more in depth about matchups and tendencies and stuff like that. And I myself am just starting to learn about those. So I really probably will not talk too much about Daily Fantasy. Um, if you do want some information about Daily Fantasy, there are a couple of sites, uh, Facebook pages, and stuff like that where I can direct you uh, for sure, uh, where I look to get a lot of my information when I'm going to play about them. There's a couple of really good ones out there. So if you have any questions about that, I can do my best to help you. But if not, I can also direct you to the information you need. All right. So that's pretty much it for this first video. I hope you guys um, got a little information from it. Like I said, for those of you who are experienced, uh, probably nothing in this video that you don't already know. And this was basically just to introduce myself, introduce what I'm going to be doing here, give some basic information to those people who may be first-time fantasy players um, about formats and scoring, and um, pretty much that's it. Um, I'll probably post another video. I'm, I might even do it tomorrow because I'm off tomorrow, so I'll be probably sitting here with nothing to do for a little while, so I'll probably make some notes tonight about draft strategies and stuff like that. And, you know, go f go through that tomorrow in a little video. Again, if you have any kind of questions, comments, anything like that, drop them, drop them in the comments down below. Um, I'll have that email set up probably by tomorrow so that way you guys can send me some emails. Uh, you can start asking me questions and I'll answer them as I can get to them. Um, either through a direct email back or I'll put some, you know, I'll put, I'll put some of the answers up on here. I'll probably, once we get going, I'll probably do like a Q&A video maybe once a week. Uh, for this um, to where I address all the you know where I do it where I'm just doing your questions and answers where I'm not doing any kind of um, other analysis or fantasy advice or anything like that so um, I may branch out eventually to maybe do like a Facebook live or something like that to where I can answer questions on the spot for you guys and everything but we'll see how that goes all right, so again, like it, subscribe to it. Uh, there'll be a lot more coming. It's going to be a lot of fun, and, you know, hopefully you guys will get some good information about it. All right, so we'll talk to you guys later, and have a great day.